Yeah, hi. I wonder if you could uh, get uh, Becky Weaver for me, please. I'm sorry. Um, name's Becky Hewitt. Becky Hewitt. That's her husband, Russ. <clears throat> yeah, well, she is married. <laughs> uh, can you give me an idea of how long that might be? What, tomorrow, too? No, no, thank you. No message. Russ, you still here? Yeah. I got my briefcase. You probably left it in the kitchen. And all the way over to my hotel before I missed it. Mom strikes again. Hey, yeah, here it is. I guess I left it here this morning. Now, what was that remark about your mother? Nothing. Just that you probably left that there because Mom's been around. You feel the pressure, too. I can't blame Carrie for my own forgetfulness any more than you can blame her for caring for me. Well, I wanted to care. In Chicago, where she can't cause any more trouble. Well, she got that message this afternoon. Yeah, and good luck with her at dinner tonight. <laughs> I'm not counting on any knockdown drag out. I just want to have a quiet evening so we can explain some things. That's it. That's it. I've decided. I'm going to go see Becky. In New York? That's where she is. That's where I'm going to go. I want to be with her. What if Becky doesn't have time for you, Russ? I don't care how little time she has for me, even if it's over dinner or... Or, or between recording session, or maybe riding in a taxi, I don't care. Wouldn't you better check with her first? Sometimes you beg to be disappointed. No, 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 I doesn't worry about that. I check with the secretary. I'll be busy through most of tomorrow night, but the next day's not as tight. All right, all right. Go ahead, I've done crazier things in my day. You know, you're the one that helped me decide? Me? Sure. All that talk about mature love, the kind of love that's always giving and not expecting to receive? I was talking about my love for Carrie. Well, maybe my love for Becky is mature, too. I want to be with her. That's all there's to it. Russ, can you honestly tell me that this visit is not some kind of a spying mission to make sure <sighs> Vince, that, that if Becky I, and Cole... If I and... thought that was what I was going to find... You wouldn't go? I doubt that. Can I tell Carrie? No, 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 don't. Let, let me handle that, okay? Well, did, did, did Brooke say she was going to talk or what? She didn't say. Well, you said you talked to her. Surely you got around asking the question. She was upset about something else. <sighs> she left the answer hanging. Just like we'll be doing. You know, you really should have told her about Elliot from the start, George. How was I to know that Elliot was going to tell Brubaker anything? You and Harold were supposed to take care of that. We simply relayed your message that she wasn't going to back up his story. Well, my sources tell me that she hasn't been back to the station since she first saw Brubaker. I think that's encouraging. Yeah, well, what, what if she mentions my name? She doesn't even know who you are, Harold. What if Elliot knows? If Nancy told him. All you can ever think about is yourself. I am the one with everything to lose. My political career is at stake. I could lose control of my savings and loan, not to mention the fact that I might go to jail. One thing, gentlemen, no matter what happens, Nancy is not to be implicated now. Do you both understand that? The instigator of this whole mess? You want her to get off scot-free? I do believe that you asked George to handle the switching of the wills. It wasn't Nancy's idea at all. Yeah, I was doing you a favor, Harold. Look where it got me. I just asked you to do it. You were the one that hand-picked a psycho and a, a, a kiss-and-tell Cupid doll to do your work for you. <laughs> George, I meant what I said earlier. Now, if you bring my name up in this case, there's no telling how many oversights of yours I'll be discussing with the police. Listen, I... Now, did you... Gentlemen, gentlemen, we're all on the same team, right? George, I do think Harold has a point, though. The less you say, the fewer people you implicate, the better. You two talk as if I have already been convicted. Carla! Jimmy! 
Carla, hon. Come on. Hey, Carla, I'm sorry about the way I acted, okay? Hey, I love you, babe. Carla, I don't want us to come this close to getting back together and have our chances slip away. Hey. Hey, okay. Carla, look, we can talk about your job offer in L.A. Carla. I'm not her, mister. Where's Carla? Well, if you're talking about the lady that was in this room, she and her little boy left. They took off? What? How long ago? All I know is they told me to clean this room. Jimmy. I'm sorry, mister. Well, where did they, do you know where they went? You could try the front desk. Flight 106, Chicago, LA, 415. It's 350, my God, I gotta get out of here. I feel better about talking to you here rather than at the station. I gather from what you say that Slaymaker has several policemen in his pocket? I'm not sure, but he always finds out whatever he wants to know. Thank you for the tip. Well, about the safety deposit box, did you check into the possibility of an immunity? Look, I can't promise you anything, but your voluntary confession would definitely be in your favor. I hope they understand. I didn't realize I was doing anything wrong. I was just doing what George asked me to do. And you're officially confirming Norm's accusation against Slaymaker? Yes. Norm, Norm's telling the truth. George authorized my giving Norm the key to the box. Do you remember any of the names involved, uh, the box number, anything? No, I didn't write it down. I just had the key ready when Norm arrived. We have hundreds of safety deposit boxes, and this was several months ago. Now I understand. I was just hoping to get more than one finger in the pie. Sorry. It's all right. Listen, I understand. I, you've been very cooperative, and I appreciate it. It's been difficult for you, especially with your relationship with Slaymaker. No one told you that, too? <sighs> Sergeant Brubaker, I'm no criminal. You know, wrong forever I've gotten involved with George. You should have seen him trying to convince me to keep quiet. I can imagine. Norm said you two had broken up. Sleep. He just dumped me after we'd been dating for almost a year. I knew something was up when he pulled the old I'll divorce my wife routine a few days ago. I almost fell for it too. What will happen to George now? A warrant will be issued for his arrest. <sighs> Sorry, I'm late. I knew you would be. I ordered your usual. Oh, thank you. Now, how did you know I was going to be late? You always are when you dread the meeting. Carrie, you know I enjoy having dinner with you. I'm no fool, Vince. You just asked me to dinner to appease your conscience. You and Russ made it clear this afternoon that you wanted me out of your lives. Safely tucked away in Chicago. You know that's not treating me fairly. We didn't want to hurt you, Carrie. It isn't fair of you to put pressure on Russ. He can't handle it right now. And he can't handle the truth, or Becky. I tried to warn him, Vince. Both of you. She's no good. They are trying to work things out. Now, Russ She's doesn't need you. She's going to hurt you. him, Vince. And when she does, both of you will see that I've been right. All right. Now we both know how you feel. Now, back off. The boy doesn't need your badgering. How do you think it makes me feel to know that Russ is running around on his wife, even if she deserves it? Russ is not being unfaithful to Becky. He told you he was only tutoring that girl. And you believe him? I suppose you also believe that Becky has nothing going with her producer. That townhouse is costing him plenty. Strictly business. Monkey business. Why couldn't Russ have listened to me? Oh, Carrie, please. I was hoping that we could have a nice, pleasant dinner and discuss some other things. Other things? Well, yeah. I mean, we have more to talk about than just our son's problems. Like why you're moving to Kingsley? Well, it's mostly business. 
Chicago is your home, Vince. You were born there. Chicago will always be my home, Carrie, but no people change. You can't just hang on to the past. Why do I get the feeling that I'm part of that past? Carrie, now we've, we have some good memories. Is that all we have? We have Russ. Yes, I gave you a son, but then so did Lisa, a legitimate one. Russ is as much my son as Tony is. He was born from love. Where did that love go? What happened? It's still here, Carrie, as always. It's just matured. Matured? You mean it's gotten old, like me? It's as hard to explain it to you as it was for me to understand it. I need to know, Vince. I still love you as much as the day Russ was born. My love hasn't changed. We've changed, Gary. We've drifted apart. We can just drift back together. No, Gary. It's over. But believe me when I tell you that I did love you. I'll go on sending your checks to you. I ask nothing in return. You want to continue to support me, but you don't want me. Of course I'll go on supporting you as long as you need me to. You and Russ aren't getting rid of me that easily. My feelings for you happen to be very strong. I'll retreat back to Chicago for a while. But don't expect me to stay there forever. Troubles fly away, because we're coming up fast on the weekend. when we get on. Can I get a window seat? 
Yeah, you got a window seat. You think it's time to call Dad? What would you say? I don't know. Since things didn't work out, and I was staying with you for a while, I think a guy should help his mom. You know, sometimes for a young man, you have very grown-up thoughts. At this time, we're ready to board those parishes holding seats in rows 15 through 26. Rows 15 through 26. Well, that's us. Maybe you can call your dad when you get to Chicago. You think it's going to be warm in Los Angeles when we get there? Jimmy, it's always warm in Los Angeles. Mom, what's wrong? Nothing, son. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, let, let me know if you hear anything. Yeah, thank you. She's not there, huh? Uh, he, he said that she went home about an hour ago, sick. Yeah, I'm getting sick, too. I already had a whole roll of these things. I still got heartburn. George, maybe you ought to uh, call her at home. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, uh, tell her you got a deal she can't refuse. Women will do anything for money, even keep their mouths shut. I don't know why you didn't offer money right off the bat. Oh, come on. I handled Brooke the best way I knew how. Money was plan B. Huh? Yeah. I thought you were supposed to have such a way with women. Harold, your record's nothing to brag about. Nobody's there. Must have gone to the doctor. Yeah. Or the newspaper. Listen, I think we're just sitting here making a big deal about nothing. I don't think she's going to admit anything because she'd only implicate herself as well. Uh -huh. Sorry. The president of her company told her to do it. Worst thing that happened to her is a slight reprimand, that's all. I know the courts. But George has friends in high places, Harold. We're talking about a federal offense. Oh. Have to be a mighty high friend. Bet it's Mike Wallace. Oh. Commissioner Slaymaker. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carpenter, Mr. Webster. Uh, uh, Sergeant Brubaker, uh, may I help you? Uh... Yes. I have here a warrant for your arrest. Uh, <laughs> there must be some mistake. Nope, afraid not. The charge is illegal tampering of a safety deposit box. Two witnesses. Uh, George, what's, uh, what's all this about? George, uh, I'm available if you need legal counsel. Yeah, you've been enough help already, Harold. Let me just get my coat. I'm sure that, uh, this will be... Settle very amicably, gentlemen. I'll, uh, I'll see to it that we don't get any headlines down at the courthouse. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. I wanted to go, Jean. I wanted to hurt you. I wanted not to love you. I wanted never to come back again, but I couldn't. I love you. I 
I love you, Carla. United 106, you are clear to Chicago. Have a good day. Thank you, Redford.